Now, so that scientists all across the world can understand each other, we have an agreed upon set of units. So these units are known as SI units, which is based upon the French, the Système International de Units. Sorry, I haven't learned French, so I'm certain that I mangled the pronunciation of that. Now, in SI units, there's seven base units upon which all other units are based. Very recently, in 2019, the way that we measure these units was changed. So I find this really interesting. Um, it's now based upon the measurement of certain fundamental constants. And there's agreed upon experiments which people all across the world can do to measure the values of these units. I mean, admittedly, my PhD was in the variation of fundamental constants, but I hope that I can get you interested in this as well. So the seven base units that we use are the seconds, and the second is defined from the frequency of one of the hyperfine transitions in the cesium-133 atom. We've also got meters, which is the unit for length, and it comes from the speed of light. So to get a length from the speed of light, we also need to use the seconds. So these base units actually come from multiple of the fundamental constants, but a scientist anywhere could theoretically do all these experiments to find out exactly what these values are and so that we all know that we're talking about the same thing. So kilograms is the unit for mass, and in order to get that one, we need to measure Planck's constant, H. There's also amps for current, and to measure that, we need to know the charge on an electron, E. We've got Kelvin's K for temperature, and to get that one, we need to know Boltzmann's constant, K. We've got moles, which is the amount of matter, and one mole is equal to the number of atoms, which is Avogadro's number, um, in 12 grams of carbon-12. And then the one which you're possibly less familiar with is for luminosity. We've got candela, which has the symbol CD. And candela is actually short for candle power. And this is for luminous intensity in a given direction of a source that emits monochromatic radiation at a frequency of 540 times 10 to the 12 hertz. So all other units are combinations of these seven units. So for example, we've been considering speed before, and we know that speed is equal to the distance over time. Now, when we want to indicate that we're considering units, one um, notation that people sometimes use is to put square brackets around something. So if we put square brackets around speed, we're showing that we're thinking about the units for speed now. And this is going to be equal to the units for distance over the units for time. And we know that the units for distance is the meter, so this is meters, and the units for time is seconds. So this tells us that the units for speed are meters per second. Now, as you'll be aware, in everyday life, we don't always use SI units. So for example, when we're talking about speed, we don't always give it in meters per second. Sometimes we talk about speed in kilometers per hour, especially if we're driving somewhere. So you need to know how to convert from one set of units to another. So let's look at how we convert 60 kilometers per hour into the SI units meters per second. Well, let's start with 60 kilometers first of all. So the K in kilometers stands for kilo. We'll have a look at prefixes soon, but to kilo basically means 1,000. So in 60 kilometers, there are 60 times 1,000 meters. And in one hour, we know that there's 60 minutes, and in one minute, there's 60 seconds. So one hour is equal to 60 times 60 seconds. So 60 kilometers per hour is equal to 60,000 meters divided by 60 times 60 seconds. And if we solve this on the calculator, we end up with 16.67 meters per second. Now, this is a conversion that you'll probably need to make relatively often. So there is a little shortcut with this one, which it may be worth learning. 
So what we've effectively done to our speed in kilometers per hour there is multiply it by 1000 to convert the kilometers to meters and then divide it by 60 times 60 to convert the hours to seconds. So we're doing 1000 divided by 3600, which is one divided by 3.6. So if you want to convert something from kilometers per hour into meters per second, you can just divide it by 3.6. Now, when we're dealing with problems in physics, sometimes we're dealing with really, really large scales. So for example, the distance between the Earth and the Sun is one astronomical unit, which is equal to 1.496 times 10 to the 11 meters. And that's not even the biggest we go. Sometimes we're considering galaxies, which are really far apart and really large. And sometimes we're dealing with really small properties. So for example, sometimes we're considering the wavelength of light. And the wavelength of light is between about 4 and 7 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. So to save time, we have agreed upon set of prefixes as well, which allow us to write out things like kilometers faster without having to include the times 1000 or times 10 to the 3 if we want to write it in scientific notation. So the types of prefixes that you'll be dealing with in physics are probably the biggest is around about a tera. So a tera has the symbol capital T and it is equal to 10 to the 12. We've got giga which has the symbol capital G and it is 10 to the 9. Mega has the symbol capital M and it is equal to 10 to the 6. Kilo is a lowercase k and it is 10 to the 3. Centi has a little lowercase c which is 10 to the minus 2. Milli has a lowercase m and it is 10 to the minus 3. Micro has the Greek letter mu and it is 10 to the minus 6. Then nano has lowercase n and it is 10 to the minus 9 and pico is a lowercase p and it is 10 to the minus 12. Very occasionally you might see femto as well. So femto is lowercase f and it is 10 to the minus 15. So a problem we could try to practice um, using these prefixes is let's ask a question, how many centimeters are there in a kilometer? Now with this, it's always a good idea to start with a bit of common sense. So we know that a kilometer is much bigger than a centimeter. So we're going to expect a number which is much bigger than one as our answer to this one. Now one kilometer is 1000 meters and one centimeter is 0 0.01 meters. So in order to calculate how many centimeters are in one kilometer, we're going to need to divide the 1000 meters by 0 0.01 meters. And when we do that, we end up with 100,000. So there are 100,000 centimeters in a kilometer. Now, if you are ever confused about whether you need to multiply or divide, just take a step back and think about whether you're expecting a larger number or a smaller number and check that, you, that your calculation agrees with that expectation.